Welcome, mate. I'm Bloodthirsty Lord, but you can call me Lordy and tell me back on the official Paragon website with a new blog post, the Monolith Update. Everything changes on December 6th. What are these changes? This sounds super interesting. And obviously, we're going to go through it, break it down, and explain every little bit of information that we do gain from this actual blog post before this update for Monolith is out on December 6th. But before we get to this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe button to keep up to date with all the greatest and latest Paragon Gaming content and Paragon Gaming news. And as always, expect it here first. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. So let's see what the Epic Games team and the Paragon team had to say about this. The TLDR, the Monolith update is here, with huge changes to Paragon, new smaller map, faster more action oriented gameplay, every hero updated, still a MOBA. That is super great here boys, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> we can't wait for you to jump in on Tuesday, December 6th. With this vlog, we want to give you an overview of the major gameplay changes that are coming along with the map in Monolith Update. And by gameplay changes, we mean that everything changes. Ooh, this sounds pretty juicy. Patch version 35 has a new map. Sure, but this update is so much, much more than that. The Monolith update represents the culmination of the past years of learnings, testings, playing, feedbacks, and talkings. The changes that we are making are based entirely on addressing key feedback items, both reported and directly observed. The goal of all these changes is very straightforward. We are confident that this new version of Paragon will deliver a faster, more visceral gameplay experience that you would expect from an action game while retaining all the meta game and strategy of a competitive MOBA. When the Monolith update goes live on December 6th, we hope you will play at least 3 games and then continue to give us valuable feedback we have been receiving for the past year. In a very real sense, this is an entirely new Paragon experience. Welcome everyone and thanks for being here with us. Let's get started. Oh my god guys, just from that little introduction, I am pretty hyped about this. So the first part is back in action. The first major areas we want to address with the Monolith update is the size of the map, the lane structure, the meta gameplay. The previous few blogs have detailed all of our goals and we've set up the map so that they can be achieved. Once we had the correct playing field, the next step was to address issues with gameplay feel. We want to more subtly deliver on the promise of what we felt Paragon should be and we looked at the game in its current life state. We didn't feel that we quite nailed it yet. To that end, we've turned up a notch, maybe two notches, notch E, <laughs> oh my god guys. Regardless of the specific notches, the first major change is the gameplay is faster. That is one thing I wanted to see because sometimes, or some components of the actual game, it felt like it was just stretching it out and it was just a daunting experience. But if it is faster, that is something we want to see. Obviously, the gameplay experience will make it more fun and hopefully not too fast that we don't know what's actually going on. Specifically, we're talking about the faster movement speed, ability and attack, execution speed, and overall game lethality. We feel this direction will help Paragon truly achieve the goal we've always had, the mobile that puts you in the action. And obviously that game gives you that feel and that's what's something great about it and that's why I got pulled into Paragon at first and obviously with the changes it kind of differed and went from away from that and now it's back to it and that's what I like to see. From here to there, the first part of our action pass involves player move speed. We want players to feel that they can get around the map without Trevor mode, but we also want to ensure that we have one unified speed for the game. To that end, we've upped the speed a lot. Once mastered, the new faster move speeds will improve easier for players to understand in terms of which engagement ranges are safe and which are unlikely to land them with a free trip back to their core. All bonuses aside, the new speeds are currently a change from where we were at in Legacy and it's going to take a few matches for players to get the feel of the things, so hang in there. So that's kind of interesting, we expected that to happen with the obviously travel mode being removed, they had to up the movement speed for the characters and it looks like we're going to have one unified movement speed for all characters, all classes, so that's great to see because every MOBA pretty much has that same mechanic unless they have a passive on the hero or some type of ability that gives that hero some type of extra movement speed compared to the actual unified speed that's given to every hero. Now let's move on to the next part, it's just maths. Delivering the desired gameplay experience discussed above can only be partially solved by movement speed, attacking, using abilities, and combat all have to feel snappy and resolve quickly to get the full effect. To this end, we have changed the way damage, armor, health, and mana work. Thank god, that's what we want to see. So much so, in fact, that the patch notes you eventually receive for Monolith Update, Hero Changes, don't have any specific values for damage changes. We've chosen to omit these values because the scale in which they exist is totally different, and we didn't want players to evaluate the changes out of context. Going forward, we'll be able to detailing all future variants as per usual. 
So uh, the scaling on heroes, damage, armor, health, and mana is going to be changed. So most likely, we'll be seeing a meta shift very soon. So the tank meta or the health meta, what are you going to call it? the armor, health, anything, that tank meta is going. And hopefully we get something great out of this. It's not 100% yet, but it looks like if we're going to be changing stuff and armor is getting changed, health is getting changed, uh, the other ones are pretty much going to get buffed and everything in my eyes, but everything else that we have in this current moment should get nerfed. So Rampage might fall down. Let's move on to the next topic, and that is damage control. So what kind of major damage and armor changes are we talking about? We've reworked damage types to allow you to better itemize armor against incoming damage. Primary attacks will now deal basic damage, while any activatable power will now deal ability damage. This happens in every other MOBA, but with Paragon we had something weird and now it's been fixed, so that's pretty cool. This is an important change that lets us get a much better handling on how ability focused hero scaling in relation to attacking heroes. This change carries over to armor and penetration, where basic armor will help defend against sustained primary attacks, and ability armor will help defend against incoming spells. Okay, so those are two new armor types. We have basic armor and ability armor. Maybe it's changed from physical armor and energy armor, but we're going to check out and see what else did they have to say about this, because if they're removing that, that's going to be kind of interesting, because that sounds like all the cards that are tanky are going to get reworked. Again, that's going to be insane. The concept of physical and energy heroes has been removed, and all players will now equip cards with unified power stats to increase their basic attacks and abilities. Oh my god, guys. Something I've wanted to see for a while. I've always dreamt of a hero that could do physical damage and energy damage. But well, why not just remove that concept and be able to do both in some type of way? And obviously, it looks like we can now. And we'll be able to use any cards with that power, and that's pretty sick. Players will buy power. We'll see that the stat build into a percentage of all their outgoing damage, regardless of whether the damage comes from their base attacks or their abilities. Building damage as Gideon will increase your abilities considerably with a small bump to your basic attacks, while buying damage as Murdoch will primarily increase your basic attacks. Down the road, we'll be looking at adding cards which might allow for increasing only ability damage or doing cool things to your basic attacks. Oh wow. I don't know how the card system is going to work now. It looks like they're going to change so much with the, within the cards. The actual stats for each card. That's what it sounds like to me. Unless there's just a simple change when they just change it to basic, um, basic damage and obviously um, ability damage. But I feel like that's too easy. And nothing's ever too easy in life. Especially if you am um, going to games. That's guaranteed nothing too easy there. Rest in peace, CDR. No, cooldown reduction is no longer a stat that casually appears as a bonus stat on cards. No, it is a one that can be slotted into cards via upgrades. The reason we have all but to remove this stat is to help hit our gameplay goals of faster ability usage. We've dramatically reduced most of the cooldowns in game. So we don't have cooldown reduction on actual cards anymore because they removed that stat, but they've applied that already on the hero's kit individually on each hero. So that's pretty cool to see. You can still find a little bit of it through as a part of a complete effect for certain cards, for example, the extra effect of Mind Flow. Okay, so some cards have a maximum effect. Once you complete that card, you get the maximum ability or the maximum upgrade out of it, and that's usually physical damage or something. In this case, if you have the Mind Flow card, you'll be able to get more cooldown reduction. That's pretty cool. How much, as an example, Gadget Stick in Mind has dropped from a 15 second cooldown to an 8 second one? Oh my god. Oh my god, that's going to be so hard to actually lane against. And Rampage Ultimate at level 3 has a brisky 40 second cooldown. As for the rest, you'll just have to wait and see. So with Rampage's Ultimate, you can use it constantly in every fight. You can pretty much use it in the jungle while you're clearing camps. Because obviously it has 40 seconds and it's, that's pretty quick, to be honest. Oh my god, guys, I'm actually so hyped for this. Mana makes a comeback. Mana has been a long devalued attribute in Paragon. 100% agree with that. But that is going to change with Monolith. Oh my god, guys. Part of the work around reducing most of the cooldowns is finding other ways to balance abilities. Some abilities with faster cooldowns will now be gated more by mana usage than time. This means it will be up to you to decide how to approach ability usage. Buy mana for more activations or spend your points on fewer, more effective activations. Okay, I see how it is. Uh, the mana pool is pretty much what's going to carry you and your abilities. Obviously, you've got low cooldown, but they're going to increase the mana usage with each actual ability, how the sounds of it. So that is actually kind of interesting. Let's move on to the next topic. What about the mine main? With all this was stated above, you should now hopefully come as no surprise that we've rebounced every hero in the game with an eye towards both faster speeds and faster kill times. Oh my god, guys. 
They pretty much reworked everything. That is insane. Ranges for most abilities have been reduced, while timings of most activations and animations have been sped up across the board. Move speed buffs and slows have likewise all been adjusted to match the new movement speeds. Wait, you want an example? Here's an example of one ability change lock with Grey Zone. Okay, I understand what they're trying to do. With every hero, they have to change bits here and there to make sense for the new map, because obviously it's smaller and provides a different gameplay experience. And obviously, if you want to provide a different gameplay experience, you will be changing pretty much everything that Paragon is at these current moments, but also keeping the same aspects of the game. So it's going to be interesting to see how this gameplay feels, and let's see what Grayson has. Grayson, Reforge, Damage Type adjusted from Physical to Ability. Enemy damage by Reforge are no longer knocked up and stunned. What? Enemies damaged by Reforge are no longer locked up and stunned. What's Reforge? Is it still the um, the actual ultimate? Because it, it feels like it changed completely. When Grayson dies, all enemies around him are slowed. Okay, they changed it. This slow is more powerful the closer they get to the place he died. Reforge no longer puts make way and assault the gates on an additional 5 second cooldown. Cooldown reduction from 240, 180, 120 to 180, 130 and 80 seconds. You can have your ultimate that pretty much makes you come back to life and gives you a crazy amount of slow if the enemies are closer to the center of the radius with 80 seconds cooldown on their ability. And obviously that damage is now ability damage changed from physical damage. Well, okay, I'm, I'm actually really interested about this mechanic and I obviously want to see more of it. The buff is presented with a usual caveat. We are still balancing full release on December 6th. And of course, we'll continue the job going forward into Infinity, so you will have to see the full list when it's ready. It's going to be a wild ride, that is guaranteed for sure, mates. Talking about practice, something that we've struggled with over the past year is the way we talk about heroes and their place in Agora. As we move forward, we want to get away from a three-tier classification of range, caster, and fighter that we've all been using to categorize heroes up until now. I was going to make a video about this, because we found some images of the actual monolith blog post that did change from the current state that we have in the game. And I was going to make a separate video about this, but looks like we're talking about it right now, so let's keep going. While it served us getting here, it's never been a wholly accurate or fair way of evaluating them. It also creates the impression that heroes are designed and evaluated in three categories, which has never been true. The Paragon of Monolith is one in which heroes enjoy the most versatile in their roles that they have ever had. In order to better reflect that, we want to change the language we use to discuss them going forward. Is it in vain that we introduce a new verbiage we're calling Hero Traits? Each hero will have a series of traits that describes the types of gameplay that the hero possesses in varying degrees. This isn't a hard and fast rule, but most of a guideline. Traits will be presented in order of how relevant we feel they are to the hero though it isn't the final word on what the hero can do. For example, if a hero is great at using a community car power, we call that hero a marauder. However, that doesn't mean that a non-marauder hero couldn't excel in the carry role given the right team comp and laning setup. Wild heroes will excel in the jungle, but that doesn't mean that the world can't exist in which a non-wild hero does well there. So those are two roles, wild and obviously marauder. So that's going to be kind of interesting to see how they work out. Marauder sounds like a late game carry like Sparrow, while a wild hero sounds like a jungle carry, most likely like a Chimera. The main goal of traits is to assist the community in looking at the hero the same way we do in design. Okay, this makes sense because one of the heroes, Kalari, when she first came out, we all thought she was a jungler. Then later on, we found out that the developers created Kalari as a laner, especially made for the mid lane, so it was kind of interesting. Each hero is unique and brings a special blend of skills to the battlefields of Agora. In this way, some will show aptitude at different playstyles, which we will attempt to highlight to let you find the kinds of heroes that play the way you want. There are quite a few traits, and it would make this block super long to detail them all here, so expect us to do that in a week. For a sneak peek, here is a look at Gideon. Gideon, Ranged, Burst Assassin, Elusive Seizure. Now let's move on to the next topic, ICU. Lastly, we want to detail some of the vision changes that are coming. Vision is a huge part of any MOBA and Paragon is no exception. We've made some significant changes to how we handle vision in-game with more to come. First off, since there are no longer any shadow pads, wow, that's pretty interesting, players won't be able to find shadow wards without the ability to enter the shadow plane themselves, such as Kalari. Additionally, Shadow Wards now deploy instantly, allowing quick vision sweeps. You will now need your own Shadow Wards to remove your enemy wards. 
So pretty much what that means is you can't destroy enemy wards by going to the shadow pads because shadow pads don't exist on Monolith and you only can use shadow wards to destroy them or you can use heroes that do enter the shadow plane era with one of their abilities like Kalari and you'll be able to destroy the shadow wards like that. Finally, wards themselves have gotten a gameplay update. They are now subject to the same line of sight restrictions that heroes are while also having a new cooldown charging system. This will mean that wards once placed are more valuable and that warding must be done in a more thoughtful, considerate manner since the field can't be filled with wards willy nearly anymore. And obviously it sounds like they changed the wards dramatically and they have like a, some type of cone shape, cooldown and a charge system on them that we're going to find out more about in the future. Minions in the Mist is the next topic. Beyond just the changes to wards, you might have noticed that I casually mentioned no Shadow Pants up there. It's true, Shadow Pants are a thing of the past. The original design intent behind Shadow Pants was to give good line of sight, breaking that wasn't built around actual line of sight breaking. Many other MOBAs employed this mechanic in several ways, and all of them hailed from the glory days of old when the term was called Fog of War. Essentially, we want Shadow Pants to give us the same impact that imperfect knowledge of the battlefield gives in the more traditional top-down isometric view. However, what we got instead was a bit inconsistent and not really super awesome. So what do we do instead? You'll notice fog walls all throughout Monolith, as you see by the image below. They are quite literally walls of fog that obscure your sight. It's impossible to see enemies through them and they will block line of sight for both heroes and wards. The gameplay we've seen out of these fog walls has been exactly what we were hoping for all along. They make going into and out of a jungle a more surprising event and they help create the laning experience we are looking to deliver. So that's pretty interesting, no more shadow paths because we have walls of fog now, or fog walls, as the new mechanic. And also you can't see anything through these fog walls like other games and it's going to be bloody amazing to play like Kalari and go into one of those fog walls and get out of it and just obviously destroy enemies. It's been pretty sick. And the last topic is, but I want it now. Alas, there are still a few days left before you'll be able to experience Monolith. However, we're incredibly excited for you to play and get your first impressions. With all the math, speed, vision, damage type, and mana changes, it's a brave new world out there in Agora. Remember the role you pick for a hero is going to be important in how you build them and how you play them. Many heroes can fill multiple roles. Don't be afraid to experiment, and certainly don't be afraid to let your teammates do the same. Try playing at least three games and please keep sending in your valuable feedback. We read it. As always, thank you for your support in helping us shape the game. Together, we're making something super awesome. And obviously, this was done by the lead hero designer, Cameron, and he's one amazing person. And this is going to be one amazing, bloody amazing experience when it does come out. Model is so hyped. The gameplay changes are crazy. We obviously have so many changes from the actual damage types, the actual gameplay, the movement speed, the ward system, the fog walls instead of shadow pads. Oh my god, guys. The actual reworks on every hero. Oh my god, this is going to be one exciting, very exciting time when it actually does come out live on December 6th. So make sure you get that date in your timetables, pretty much right everywhere, right in your phone, your notepad, everywhere, and get ready for that amazing day when this map does come out. So pretty much that is all we're going to talk about within this video and later on, in other videos, we will go more in depth about this and explain every little bit of information even more if we pretty much didn't understand fully yet. And obviously with the next update of news and everything that does come to Paragon as they release more information, expect it here as always first because that's what we try to do here, keep you guys up to date with Paragon news. But as always, I want to know your thoughts about this. All these changes, what do you think about it? Do you think it's a good way to go to Monolith or a bad way for Monolith? In my eyes, it looks bloody amazing. But leave your thoughts and your opinions in the comment section down below. So mates, if you enjoy this video, show your support, smash that blade like button. Let's try to get 150 likes on this video. And if you make want to see more Paragon Gaming content and Paragon Gaming news on my channel, all you have to do is share this with your friends and hit the subscribe button to become mate today. And that is all for this video. Oh, time to go, but don't you worry. We'll back very soon. Hey, Jazz boys, you can taste nothing yet. At this very moment, I am super hyped. I'm overhyped and I just can't wait because... I'm very impatient and it comes down to two weeks of waiting for this new map and the new changes. Oh my god, guys. It's going to be one daunting experience, but at least we can do it together. <laughs> and then it feels right.